The past year has not been a great year for Tesla short sellers. Since May of 2019, Tesla stock has gone up over 1,500%, leaving these short sellers in huge trouble. In 2020 alone, the Tesla short sellers have lost $35 billion combined. The short selling manipulators who drove Tesla stock down to $180 a share pre-split gave everyone one of the best buying opportunities of their lifetime. In this video, I'm going to go over what the Tesla short sellers are up to heading into 2021. Welcome to Kaz Gains Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. David Einhorn has been shorting Tesla for many years, and he's most famous for calling out Elon Musk at CNBC's Sohn conference in May of 2019. Napoleon once said, never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake, so I won't. Just watch the screen. That's a lot of horse <laughs> Einhorn is one of the first people to receive Tesla short shorts in August of 2018, which he publicly announced on Twitter by stating, I want to thank Elon Musk for the shorts. He is a man of his word. They did come with some manufacturing defects, hashtag Tesla. Elon Musk then replied by stating, put them on and post a selfie, which David Einhorn obviously didn't do. Now, Einhorn is still doubting Tesla's ability to be profitable despite five consecutive quarters of profits. Einhorn's short position has hurt himself and his clients by a substantial amount. Greenlight Capital, which is Einhorn's hedge fund, has gone from over $30 a share in 2014 to $7 a share today. Einhorn went from a net worth of $1.9 billion to his most recent estimate of $700 million. Einhorn has not been private about how his Tesla short position has created miserable losses for his fund. As in Greenlight Capital's third quarter conference call, he admitted that Tesla quote-unquote detracted from performance and stated that the stock was driven by retail investors. Our Tesla short detracted from performance. The stock nearly doubled in the quarter, driven in part by a surge in retail investor flows following the company's announcement of a 5-for-1 stock split in August and a potential inclusion in the S&P 500 index. We believe market behavior like this is emblematic of the mania surrounding a small universe of story and other tech stocks. It is our view that we are now in the early stages of the bubble popping. <laughs> Elon Musk definitely must be getting a good laugh at Einhorn's losses. Back in 2019, Elon publicly called Einhorn Mr. Unicorn when responding to Einhorn's fraud accusations. It was also revealed in September 2020 that Einhorn purchased Tesla put options, which definitely hasn't been doing well. It's one thing to think that Tesla is overvalued in the short term, but Gordon isn't on that scale when it comes to Tesla stock. Gordon Johnson is most notorious for not only being the rudest Tesla short seller, but also the most contradictory one. While debating with Rob from Tesla Daily, Gordon was exposed for constantly asserting that Tesla is not a growth stock, even though he was projecting for growth. That's just not accurate, right? It's not this accurate to debate. say. It's this not accurate to say. Their revenues are not growing, so they're not in hyper growth. They're, they're, in, they're in declining growth. This so is the most the growth story. This is the you know, most confusing part about our conversation to me is why you say that the growth is over when you're guiding for growth. Gordon still doesn't seem to catch on to the facts that Tesla is set to grow significantly in the future. He's been shorting Tesla since April of 2018 when Tesla was at $300 a share pre-split or $60 a share post-split. Gordon still has a $17 price target on Tesla stock, which even then would not give him much profit due to the interest he has been paying for his short position. Now you might be wondering how Gordon gets his low price target of $17. Gordon's price target would imply a drop of over 97% from today's levels. In an interview with Real Vision Finance, Gordon explained how he arrived at $17 a share. If we're looking at a, a, a EV company, we look at demand by region, then we look at demand um, um, uh, for that specific brand. 
Then we model out what their costs are. And then we add all that up to get to a number. We're not backing into, you know, just because a stock has went from 50 to 500, we're not backing into a model that, that spits out a $500 stock price, right? There's times where stocks are grossly overvalued, which I think now a lot are. What's extremely overvalued is Gordon Johnson's rating of 0.2 stars on tipranks.com. Gordon still values Tesla as a car company, despite everything we've seen over the past few months. This includes Tesla's energy storage deployments increasing exponentially, Tesla's vertical integration into battery manufacturing and mining, and even their ability to rapidly sell out on limited items like Tesla Tequila. Chamath Palihapitiya, a famous fund manager, pointed out a few months ago that Tesla is an energy company and that's the component that the Tesla bears are missing. Not surprisingly, Gordon Johnson disagrees with this statement. Is it batteries? Are they going to sell drivetrains? Are they going to be utility companies? Like, like you got guys on, going on CNBC saying Tesla's not a car company, it's an energy company. It's literally crazy what's going on right now if you have any perspective of how truly to value companies and if you have perspective on companies that have did similar things before. While Tesla will likely see a correction in the short term, the fact that Gordon can't see the long-term vision is laughable. Jim Chanos is often regarded by short sellers as the LeBron James of short selling. He has successfully shorted many fraudulent companies like Enron, but when it comes to Tesla, he's totally missing the target. In terms of overall investment performance, Chanos has actually done pretty well over the last 12 months. His fund, Kinecos Associates, has beaten the average hedge fund portfolio return over the past 8 years. Nevertheless, Chanos would be doing much better if it wasn't for his painful losses on Tesla stock. Most recently, Chanos accused Tesla of having suspicious accounting methods. In addition, he still thinks that Tesla is a car company. When you're valuing Tesla as a car company, it's certainly overvalued in the short and long term. If you value Tesla as an energy company, it is overvalued in the short term, but long term, the potential speaks for itself in energy storage and energy generation. Really a business model and evaluation issue with Tesla. I mean, there's some things we don't like about their accounting uh, as well. Despite what everyone says, they're still an automobile company. Um, they make cars. And so they're competing with other companies that make cars. Chanos has been talking about the upcoming competition for years now. But even now, heading into 2021, it's becoming clear that there is no EV competition from legacy automakers. Hey, bring um, this up. How long have you been short Tesla? So we've been short it four years. But the bigger problem has is that Porsche is coming. How expensive? Sorry. The big, oh, let's say that again. You think Porsche is coming with their their own car? Porsche is coming with the Mission E, and and and, so and Jaguar with the and so base. and so is Audi with the e-tron, and now, the big boys are coming, and they're coming with sexy looking cars at the same price point with better features, faster cars, great styling, and so what was unique for Tesla is no longer unique. Well, the it's been quite some time now since Chanos announced that the competition was coming and there is still only the non-existent GMC Hummer EV. When it comes to the Hummer EV, GM has made ambitious production timelines that it likely won't meet. Back in 2018, Mark was managing a large sum of money for his clients. Now, after his embarrassing failures, he manages as much money as your grandma. Well, I'm rich. <laughs> well, I am too. Okay. Now you just shut up. Okay. In 2019, Mark's fund, Stanfield Capital, revealed that Mark achieved an average return of 8% per year since the fund's inception in 2011. In the most recent quarterly report, Mark's annual average return dropped to 2% per year. Mark has lost millions of dollars for his clients through his Tesla short position. The amount was disclosed in an interview with Tesla Bull Hyperchange back in 2018. Before we start, let's disclose uh, each of you what your stakes are here financially. Mark, we'll start with you. Yeah, so we're shorted sh stock here. Yeah, we're short uh, Tesla via outright stock, and, and we own long dated puts and some short dated puts. And yeah, it's it's, it's a seven figure dollar amount of stock that we're short. All right, and Galileo. Uh, yeah, so I'm a Tesla shareholder. I own 60 shares. Mark's cash pile is not the only thing that's burning, though. His reputation has stooped down to a point where no TV shows want to invite him to their shows. Nonetheless, there was still one podcast that was willing to talk with Mark. <laughs> the, uh, the f too hot for TV, uh, Mark Spiegel. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Stanfield Capital, everything else. Yeah, I'll put it all in the podcast description. Hello. I don't know about, I don't know about too hot for TV. I, you know, 
I don't have a face for TV. I don't even have a face for radio anymore. All I have a face for is f- podcasts. But anyway. yeah, and even that is uh, you're right. Dude, on the, that is iffy. Yeah, you're, you're right on the borderline. What's going on? Mark Spiegel's bearish thesis now is that Tesla stock's rise was not because of short sellers covering their positions, but because of Robinhood investors buying in. Mark stated that there was this whole gambling mentality that took place partially because people got stuck at home. In order to calm his clients down about his Tesla short position, he sent a letter saying, Year to date, Tesla, the biggest bubble in modern stock market history, is up and astounding 495%, and that hurt us significantly. So our short positions have obliterated the profits from our long positions, and yet when this bubble pops, we'll be glad we have them. Michael Burry, who famously shorted the bond market in the 2008 recession, has recently come out and announced that he is shorting Tesla stock. Going even further than that, Burry has advised Elon Musk to sell 25-50% to of his Tesla shares. Burry stated in a deleted tweet, So, Elon Musk, yes, I'm short Tesla, but some free advice for a good guy. Seriously, issue 25-50% to of your shares at the current ridiculous price. That's not dilution. Personally, I believe that a correction on Tesla stock would likely come soon, as no stock can go up forever. However, unlike the well-known short sellers like Einhorn, Chanos, Spiegel, and Johnson, who see problems in Tesla's business model, I see a correction for Tesla stock as healthy for the stock price and a chance to buy in. Let me know where you think the Tesla short sellers will be in 2021. Do you foresee their short positions finally paying off? Or do you think that the Tesla short sellers will continue to lose money? If you enjoyed this video, Please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.